name is Coral Verde. I'm Elias. And this is Token, Token Legends. Episode 5. Today we are doing the state of Delaware. Yes. And we are already high. Well, I am anyways. I've been high all day. I was pretty sober. Okay, but he was high earlier. I was. Today is 420. 420. So we've been celebrating. I really wish they paid me to make a commercial. Or I mean even just send me some free drinks, that'd be nice. We went but, to the beach to celebrate 420. Yes, and it was the beach that episode one was yes. talked about. Titlow Beach in Tacoma. They have the giant Pacific octopus species yes. that live there in the water. I had that blood orange drink, 100 milligrams of THC, 100 of CBD. I'm about to smoke a blunt I rolled with a that hemp oil sugar cane wrap. He's been loving these wraps. It's a good brand. Yes. We just wanted to promote those brands because we use them a lot. We love them. And I mean, if y'all want to send some free merch, we will be more than happy to take it. Yes. <laughs> but anyways. I think from that brand, my favorite flavors are the sugar cane and the mango. For sure. We have a friend that is going to send us some King Palm mango goji wraps and we are so excited for those. Yes. Do you know what else 420 means? It is the start of the season of the Taurus. It's my season, baby. If you want some blessings from a Taurus, stick around to the end and got you for the Taurus season. I got a bit of a channel message at the end of my story. That's cool. As per usual, we have no idea what each other has brought to talk about today. I know that Coral's is <coughs> something of the paranormal activity and mine is a cryptid, but that's about all we know about each other's. Something of a paranormal activity. Yeah. Oh, and today we are smoking the strain Cushments <laughs> mixed with um, infused King Caesar Keef infused uh, hybrid pre roll. We put a little bit of that in both mm. my blunt and in corals. Yeah, 32% hybrid. 32% hybrid. Yeah, nice. The Cushments ounce was only $15 at Zips. It was a really good deal. And the pre roll was only three. And the pre rolled, yeah, it was only 350 They have zips located all throughout, like Tacoma and the Seattle area. That's also where I got my drink, and it was like 10 50 I think. Yeah, shout out to Zips. Heck yeah, I love Zips. Yeah. They have some really good deals. It's also where really nice got his rolls. But it's 420. <laughs> what a way to celebrate the holiday. I will forever know 420 as the start of Tacoma season from now on. I never even acknowledged that. And 420 has taken on a whole new meaning for me. During tourist season, it's time for relaxation and rejuvenation. Cannabis can help you relax and rejuvenate. Fun fact, I use cannabis to relax and rejuvenate. I really hope you're surprised by my cryptid. One of these episodes, I'm gonna surprise Coral with like something that she's never heard of before. It's gonna be great. You'll probably surprise me with something like today. Also, to all of you that are out there working today, Hillary, Maria, and Chris, so many more of you that I don't even know. I just know that I talked to you three recently and know that you're working today. Just know this bulls for you, man. I love you all. Thinking about you. Sending you all the good vibes. I hope you feel it today while you're at work. You're the real ones. And we love you. I know this will be posted until May, but still. May this fresh reactive energy come back to you. Not only on 420, but also on May, whatever day this is out. Hopefully May 1st. May Day. Did you ever celebrate May Day? No. Because May Day will probably be the day that this will come out. Do you know what May Day is? Yeah, I actually celebrated it. Oh, cool. Dropped off May Day baskets. Dropped off May Day baskets? What's that? That's what you do on May Day. What? I'm confused. What do you think Mayday is? My mom 
always have us make like mayday baskets and we'd like hang them on the neighbor's store or something. That's cute. Yeah, they're like little nice baskets. Sometimes they'd like flowers in them, sometimes they'd like goodies, like cookies or something, like I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Mayday baskets. How many of you know about mayday baskets? I thought mayday was a thing for protest. Protest. It's a protest day. That sounds very familiar. Yes, it's a really big protest day in Seattle. It's not recognized as official holiday, but it's a nationwide day of strike. Interesting. Thousands turn out for protests and marches in Seattle and other major U.S. cities like a workers' rights. It's basically, yeah, workers' rights. Actually, I guess a lot of people show up for a lot of different reasons. Like uh, Black Lives Matter and like some other reasons too. That's really cool. Look at Mayday Baskets and see what those are for. If I don't know, where did that start from? How does that tie into the protest? Mayday Basket, according to the Old Farmer's Almanac, this was popular <laughs> back in the 19th and 20th centuries. People would fill paper baskets or cones with treats or flowers, then they'd knock on the reception store and yell, May Basket, and run away. Yeah, that's what we did. The purpose, the commemorate and turn of the chilly and rainy months to the warmer and happy ones. It's a pagan ritual. Interesting. It like is similar to pagan rituals that have been in the twelfth and thirteenth centuries in Germany. Hmm. It's just to like be like, hey oh, it's getting warmer and I love you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Sweetest in your life. We did that. And we're like Protest bad. Things are bad. I knew it was for some really good reasons. Mm. I think I remember specifically being like workers' rights. Makes sense. Alright, well I'm ready to hear your story. Oh yes! I forgot I was doing that. Tell me about that cryptid. My cryptid popped up pretty dang fast. And then I just, it stuck with me. I tried to look at other ones, but the name just kept rotating in my head. And so I just, I had to come back and do this one. It is, you know, found amongst many different states. Mm -hmm. um, not just Delaware, it's also found, you know, Massachusetts, Virginia. It's found in a lot of different places along the, the eastern seaboard. Well, all over, but mm -hmm. a lot of like the kept history over time is focused around that area. Gotcha. But it's it's all over, including like uh, Canada. Interesting. Originated it in native folklore among the um, Wampanoag, Mohican, Chippewa, and Algonquin tribes all in that area, amongst a lot of others. And it is the Pukwudgie. A swamp creature? Forest, wooded area, and swamp creature. Interesting. Uh, spirit, spirit of the woods, spirit of nature. I think I might know what this one is. I'm so sorry, dang it. One of these episodes, I will find something that Cole doesn't know anything yeah, about. Yeah, but seriously, remind me of it because I bet you'll it's, remind me of stuff that I won't even remember. It's episode five now, and we have yet to do it. The Pukwudgie. I'll start out with what they look like, and then I'll show you some pictures, and then I'll, I'll keep going. They're usually two to three feet tall. Oh. About knee height oh. is like where they're described. Oh. They look like small humans um, oh, with canine-like noses, large pointed ears, big eyes, long pointy fingers. Um, they're comparable to trolls, goblins, and leprechauns. Interesting. Most have been described to be able to transform into animals, or even half animal, half humanoid. Native legends have also included uh, cougars, smooth gray skin, sometimes shiny, and a sweet floral scent. Usually found in like spiritual areas, haunted areas. They were spotted a lot around Fall River by the home of, you might have, you might recognize this name. Lizzie Borden. Oh, yeah. The axe murderess. Yeah. Apparently, a lot of Pukwudgies have been spotted. Interesting. By Fall River, by her home. Oh. Um, and by state penitentiaries. Interesting. I wonder if there'd be any out by Westport. Pukwudgie means person of the wilderness. Hmm. And then, are you, are you ready for some pictures? Yes. I've got several. So, the first one, I don't know if it's computer generated, was, but it's like, 
has was listed as a spotting but could definitely not be a real photo then i have four art pieces of puck wedgies and then two stuffies am i gonna need a puck wedgie stuffy after this yes <laughs> so the first one spotting interesting okay that's pretty cute yeah and then here's an art piece Not so cute, but kind of. A wee puck wuzzy, mustn't tease. Okay. Oh, that's not cute at all. But those are four keys and like pepper looking things. And are you prepared for this? Okay. That's so cute. Here's more stuffing with those little ears. Oh my god, that one's the cutest. I do need this one. I need both of them actually. So cute. Yep. They look so soft. Hook wedgies. I love them. Yeah. There are different uh, descriptions of how they behave in different uh, tribes and areas of the world. Some are described as like completely harmless uh, pranksters. They're mischievous. Interesting. They'll steal and hide things. Um, they are known everywhere to be able to disappear. Interesting. Like, They'll just turn invisible. Huh. And like appear and disappear at will whenever they want to like mess with you. Do they like collecting things? Um, that wasn't listed. I was thinking that creature would be fantastic piece. Yeah. Um, some are described as like, if you, you really don't want to mess with them or taunt them at all because they will become violent. And like, mess with you, lead you into danger purposely. Uh, launch poison arrows, um, use magic. Wow. Um, and like, they can like really hurt you. And in some places they're like, bad. You really want to avoid them. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Um, they're angry at the state of forests and stuff. So like, yeah, I bet. they'll like steal children and like cause general mayhem. They're listed as mischievous and potentially violent everywhere, but like it really varies on the different places you look into. They're li mostly just listed as like very mis mischievous spirits. Hmm. Um, they're also listed as omnivores. They can eat almost anything, including like poisonous plants. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. That's the puck wedgie. Or at least <sighs> what I could find on it. Okay, well. There's a lot more. I love them and I want one of the stuffies. Books and stuff about them. There's books and stuff? Yeah. Nice. Okay. I love them. A little stuffy. Apparently they're very mischievous. You kind of want to avoid them. Yeah. Okay, mischievous. And it was listed that they, they know how to use fire. Interesting. <laughs> I thought that was like a marker of like if they use for humans. Mm. You know, like I just thought if you know how to like, use fire, you're you don't want species. a mischievous person to like cause fire. That's for sure. But it sounds like they, if they were upset about the state of forests and stuff, I just wonder if they're like protectors of the forest. And are using it very responsibly. Probably. And uh, I think they're just mad at humans for destroying everything. Um, my theory is that they are a, like, when the Neanderthals and everything split off of each other, you know? All back in the day where there all those humanoid species were kind of existing together and then started killing each other and it was terrible. Yeah. It's probably one of those species that broke off that decided that they were never going to rejoin humanity again. They're interdimensional, which is why they can appear and disappear at will. Yeah. Makes sense. Or they are burrow people and they burrow in and out of things and it just looks like they're disappearing even though they're just really good at hiding their burrows and like coming and going in and out of them. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. 
I just think they are what they are. Another you know, creature that exists. Makes sense. I feel like if there's so many sightings over so long from so many different types of people, like all over, that's just, you know, it exists. You can't deny it. It exists. That makes sense. That's me. Yep. I'd have to agree. But I genuinely think it was like a species like human creature that makes sense. It's like, screw all of you. You're destroying the planet and I'll have nothing of it. Ready for my paranormal activities? I'm ready. Okay. So, my story today is about a mysterious light. I guess mysterious sightings of the light. They are also called corpse lights or bad weather witches, which I really thought was a very nice, accurate description of me in a lot of different ways. The bad weather witch. Bad weather witch. I love that. Yeah. Okay. I'm a bad weather witch in a lot of different ways. So there have been like hundreds of sightings of these like lights out in, I think it's Solar Bay. The Phantom Light of Kate Henlopen. Kate Henlopen. I think it's like the Delaware Bay is like the body of water that it is around. There have been hundreds of sightings of this light, and basically what it is is it's like ships will be like lost at sea and won't be able to see anything and then all of a sudden out in the night they'll see a lighthouse and they'll start like sailing towards it and when it's too late they realize that they're just being led to a bunch of jagged rocks and they all die and like That's hundreds of <laughs> hundreds of ships have this has happened to hundreds of ships over like hundreds of years wow and like even to this day, ancient ship wreckage still washes up on shore because of how many ships are just crashed into the water. And like, one of the very first recorded crashes was in, on Christmas of 1655, the Devonshire man, Devonshire man, Devonshire man, I don't know how to pronounce it. It, but that was the name of the ship and her 200 plus sailors were at sea when they saw a comforting sighting of a lighthouse they were just sailing towards it and when it was too late they just crashed, crashed into died. jagged rocks and died all of them people still see the lights to this day so many wrecks have been recorded over the years and also some have disappeared so like one of the ships that has disappeared was in 1980. The USS Poet was transporting grain to Egypt and it was as soon as they were like clear of the, the Delaware Bay, the ship was just never seen again. No one ever found it ever again. No wreckage, no pieces of it, nothing. Also Fort Miles is an old World War II structure that is on the Cape and it's said to be haunted and also has strange sightings of lights. I don't know, people are just seeing lights over there. There is like a story that, I'm always hesitant to believe stories like this, but every single account that I read said that this happened because a native tribe cursed the bay because a group of colonizers just came and massacred an entire family or whatever during the wedding. And so like, they cursed an European ship to be like in the bay or whatever to crash. So I don't know. I personally believe that they're just weird lights out there and they don't have different purposes and that it's one of those things and that was what they wanted to believe and so they made up a story to blame someone else for their misfortune even if it was like we're paying for what we did it still feels like mm, you're just blaming someone else for your problems one of those lights that i'm watching before you listed that it could have been a curse my thoughts were sirens 
Interesting. It well, must be a siren. Who's eating people? Maybe. Has been like, I'm mute, but I it's like have an, an advantage. fish siren. Seriously. That's crazy, probably, honestly. Because that's like a shipload yeah. of bodies. Yeah. It's an angler fish. That's a it's lot of angler bodies. fish. Siren. I agree. I think I'm, I'm with that theory. She's eating good and yeah. living her best mute life. <laughs> In 1798, a British ship called Debrac. I don't know. Debrac? I don't know. Debrac. B R A A K. Was lured to its demise, and it is said that the ghost ship still makes appearances sometimes, reenacting its crash. And like hundreds have died in the same exact location as that ship. Interesting. So. I don't know. I am on board with the angler fish, though. And honestly, this is going to be a pretty short episode, but like, we're just having a chill ass day because we've been in Ohio all day and it's been great. And I know it's 420 for us right now, but it's going to be May Day for us whenever this comes out. And like, regardless, that's how you start. celebrate. Have a good day. Regardless <laughs> of how you're celebrating, have a good day. But also, it's the start of tourist season. And so, if you stuck around this long and you would like to get a blessing from me, I'm going to read one to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? I have wishes for you all. I wish you will prioritize relaxation and rejuvenation, but that you also get more proactive in getting in touch with your creative side. Slow and steady wins the race. Life feels hard in some moments, but they always pass. Each one holds its own beauty, its own purpose. Hold yourself in these moments. I wish for you the ability to be aware and love yourself in those moments. Be grateful for all you have. That's a really good blessing. Thank you, I received that. You're welcome. I hope you received that too. Yeah, I hope you're all really high. And thank you, Delaware, for having some neat legends. What do yes. you think they are? Like, okay, so I really do genuinely believe that yours are just a species that have been. Yeah. They refuse to interact with us now, they're just done. Thank you, Delaware, for having book wedges and allowing yeah. for me to learn about them. It's a really good episode. Mm -hmm. and, and I really, truly, really loved yours. I, I think, think that yours was awesome. Is, I, think it's, I think it really is a siren. Yeah. Angler fish siren, and nobody lives to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. You've convinced me. Genius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, short, sweet, to the point. Boom, bada, 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 bada. Everybody go enjoy your holidays. And if you would like to buy our next ounce, $20 gets an ounce and tips the bud tenders, which if we can find some more $15 ounces, that tips them $5. Like, and gets me some rolls. Yeah, and gets less some rolls. If you would like to fund our next episode, if you'd like to sponsor our next episode, we will shout you out. And you can send it to our cash app below. And yeah. We love Thank you. Thank you all for watching. We love you. We'll see you next time on Token Legends.